Yo, Friday. There's not much going on in the world. <laughs> in a strange sort of way, Japan is really where it's at. Weak Japan data bolsters stimulus case. Japan released a mostly weak batch of economic data for November, bolstering the case for fresh monetary. That's from the central bank. And fiscal. That's from the government. Stimulus. Which will be pushed by Shinzo Abe, the country's new returning prime minister. Consumer prices slid 0.1% last month from a year earlier, the Statistics Bureau reported on Friday, underlining Japan's long struggle with deflationary pressures. 20 years and counting deflationary pressures. Why? Why indeed? Um, from the body of this Financial Times article, we get an early boost to output will be critical to the new administration, said analysts. Solid growth in the first quarter of the next fiscal year, beginning in April, will be vital. They said both to strengthen the LDP's chances of consolidating its power in the July elections in the upper house, in which no party has an overall majority. So much political stuff. It's not for any great reasoning, but political. Everything seems to be political. And also to lay the groundwork for an increase in sales tax beginning in April 2014, which is the priority of Japan's powerful finance ministry. So they're going to give with one hand and take with the other. It's a strange do, though, isn't it, really? I mean, you've got trouble with um, deflation. So it, you can see the, the thinking that if we put up um, the sales tax, well, things will cost more. But I'm not sure that that's quite the right line of thinking. Ambrose Evans Pritchard in The Telegraph gives us, worth re reading, following the link and reading the whole article, um, a pretty powerful piece. Premier Shenzo Abe is to spend up to 1 trillion yen, which sounds a lot, but it's only 7.1 billion pounds, which is about 10, 10 billion dollars, buying plant, buying plant, bits of kit, big machinery, in the electronics, equipment and carbon fibre industries to force pace of investment. And that's the government are going to be buying the plant. The disclosure came and they're going to rent it at advantageous prices to the high-tech companies, apparently. The disclosure came just after Mr Abe vowed to revive Japan's nuclear industry with fresh generation of reactors, insisting that they would be completely different from the Fukushima Daiichi technology. Well, they will be different, of course, and they'll be newer and safer, and that's quite wonderful. But again, you can see this is kind of political. It really is just, we've got to spend money on bloody something. What can we spend the bloody money on? So, nuclear reactors it is. Big, safe as safe as possible, expensive as possible, new ones. Ambrose Evans Pritchard goes on later in the article, Mr Abe's Liberal Democrats have already lambasted the central bank, threatening a new bank law unless it adopts a radical measure to pull Japan out of deflation, including a growth target of 3% for nominal GDP. So that's nominal GDP, the number of GDP should go up by 3%, and they've put the inflation target for the central bank up to 2% from 1%, which they couldn't hit anyway. He has set an implicit exchange rate target of 90 yen to the dollar, instructing the Bank of Japan to drive down the yen with mass purchases of foreign bonds along lines pioneered by Swiss. The Swiss are pegging the Swiss franc to the euro at 1.2, I think it is. And if it goes out of that range, they buy. And yes, the Swiss National Bank um, balance sheet is going up and up. 
ju just during this has pushed the yen up towards 90 already a lot of this it's great the carry trade comes into this an awful lot which I've never really got my head totally round I don't know how much money is in and how much money is out what's happened over the last 20 years is that everyone's known that the Japanese interest rates are going to be kept up up zero nothing bug all so they external people go to Japan borrow money in J Japan money gen yan ja, Japan air money and then go to the outside world where interest rates are higher and investment opportunities are more lucrative and buy other things there and make money there and the outside world and then if they have to pay the Japanese loan back that's the carry trade or they'll just roll it over outside and Mr. and Mrs. Shinata Wabe of Japan knowing that they can only get 1% interest on anything in Japan anyway have been taking their yen and buying foreign currency and investing abroad there's an awful lot of Japanese country currency technically out there as an in investment out there and as the Japan Japanese Japanese people get older they'll be wanting to sell the investments from out in the world that's been making them money and need them to spend on their retirement so they will be getting foreign currency and buying the yen which as you can see would bid up the price of yen so there's a real tussle going on that there's 20 years of carry trade and Mr. and Mrs. Watanabe's money out there which is trickling back and being paid over and turned over against the government central bank wanting to weaken the yen which is um, doing the exact opposite thing they're even setting up a kind of a sovereign wealth fund type thing where the government central bank are going to guarantee things and the money from Mr. and Mrs. Watanabe and the people and the Mr. and Mrs. Watanabe's that weren't savvy enough to invest abroad directly or indirectly through agents can invest in this fund which is going to invest abroad which is kind of lets everybody get into this fund and then we'll invest abroad and drive the uh, the value of the yen down it's to my mind the the, the main thing of this it, it's just showing that the, the the kind of rules of doing things which is the borrowing and spending that the governments do in taxing um, or selling bonds and the whole thing is just all twisted and out of shape and Japan is the most twisted and out of shape of all of them and as um, Sned says it's the place to it's the place to watch at the moment because they're on the um, they're on the front carriage of the train to wherever we're going right so just finished with a thing from the UK change in the numbers of employed people from the start of the recession May 2008 to well the last figures in which was October 2012 an increase in the amount of people employed in the United Kingdom which is really very strange an increase in the amount of people employed in the United Kingdom but it's a kind of a fudge it's a bit of a con in the UK full-time employees you can see at the bottom of this chart it is well down uh, just above that is all in employment is it's up a bit more than that it's it's up there are more, more people employed at the this stage of the uh, recession than there were um, at the beginning which is quite remarkable seeing a lot of the UK um, economy is pretty well shot at but the way they've done this is by increasing the other three categories there which is temporary employees temp you just get employed on a temp basis part-time employees which you can imagine but as soon as you're on part-time being employed you're not unemployed and the biggest category which is self-employed which is a huge great con from the government where it tells people that you can go off and decorate for your next door neighbor or something and get a certain amount of money and we 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 will continue to pay your dole your your um, benefits 
but because you've painted next doors you're also counted as self-employed so although they have to pay your full dole you can all but the bonus is for the government you can be counted as self-employed and but that doesn't answer the entire thing for the UK there's still something strange going on in the UK why there is not more unemployment it isn't all being covered up by government cons but a lot of it is but from this the main drive is Japan is where it's at that's the front carriage of the world economy hurtling to wherever we're going bye